Today's floss tube adventure is going to hop around to a whole bunch of things, but I wanted to start out with what I'm calling an OFO, an old finished object. Um, in the picture you can see the magazine I got it from. I, I can't even remember what the magazine was called. I don't think it's running anymore. I want to say just cross stitch, but I'm also pretty sure that's not right. Anyways, I stitched this many years ago because I stitched it for my grandmother and she lives in England. And as you can probably tell from the way I speak, I don't. Um, or she lived in England. And so for me to have stitched this for her, I, I, I'm I almost thinking maybe I was in grade school, maybe middle years. Um, And here's what it looks like hanging on the wall. So when she passed away, my mom went over and brought a few things back with her. And this is the one of the things that my mom brought back. Um, if I remember correctly, my mom framed this for me uh, to give to her. And now I've got it hanging on my own wall. It would have been, I'm pretty sure it would have been the first decently sized piece I did. And I remember very distinctly that the windows were really hard to stitch. Um, first of all, I wouldn't have known what to call it, but it's basically confetti in there, little isolated stitches. And then you backstitch uh, the grill on top of it, and I remember that being a bit frustrating. And I also seem to recall fiddling, fiddling around with the, the Union Jack a little to make it more accurate. A lot of um, cross stitches and artwork and things you can buy in shops will show the white stripes um, to be of even thicknesses, and they're not. So I, th I, th I seem to recall trying to fix that. Um, I believe this piece was called British Tea House, or English Tea House, and might have been the f one, of the, one of the things that kind of got me into cross-stitch. There were some French knots on here, and there were also satin stitches on the roof, I do believe. So, it was... I tend, to, I tend to pick up things that are way harder than I should, but then you somehow muddle through and you learn a lot along the way. So, old finished object, there you go. I've been getting into the Mill Hill bead kits lately, and I started with this rubber ducky. It was a ton of fun to stitch. And it's going to be a Christmas present for a friend of mine. I don't think she knows about my floss tubes, so I think I can say that. She really likes rubber ducks and has a lot of them in her bathroom. On her shower curtain and things like her toothbrush holder are all rubber duckies. So I thought that would be cute. Another Mill Hill bead kit. These are flip-flops and it's actually uh, two pieces. You stitch the I guess the right flip-flop and the bucket on one, and then the left flip-flop on a separate piece and tack them together. There's a tiny little treasure. Uh, the picture showed a butterfly, but it came with a bird. It might be a little too small to see. And this one has something a bit unique about it. The There's sort of uh, loops of beads on the thong part of the flip-flops. So that was fun to learn how to do. And the last Mill Hill bead kit I want to show you today is this Grandpa's tractor. And I actually filmed a little bit, um, so I'll leave the talking for that. Another Mill Hill bead kit. This one is called Grandpa's tractor. It's from the Autumn Harvest collection. So if I angle a bit and get a bit more sunlight, maybe. few different types of beads. You've got the petite seed beads in the black and the red. Um, oh, and the white pearl ones. The larger beads in the gold and the green. There's the white beads again showing up as flowers. And then there's also a diamond shaped treasure. I'll see if I can. There we go. It's a bit more clear. I'm really enjoying these. This is the, third, the fourth bead kit that I've completed. 
and it does help me feel a little more confident if I ever do a Mirabilia or one of those that I'll actually have some beading, some basic beading skills, a basic idea of how it works. Uh, the next FFO, it's a Lily of the Valley cross stitch. I believe it was a Riolis kit. And it's actually hanging up on my wall. Done by the same framer as, um, as everything else I get framed. Fleet Galleries in Winnipeg. They're awesome. So we chose a sort of a barn board look frame. Um, and that is wood. And then there are two mats, and there's the stitching behind, behind glass and behind reflections. Um, the barn board sort of matches my, my floor, although that's a laminate. There we go. So I've got it hanging beside, beside my window in my living room, and I really love it. It turned out so well. Thanks, huge thanks to the framers. They always do such a good job. So there it is up close again. I'll try to stand to the side so that you can see. The last fully finished object I wanted to show you was this birth announcement. I tried to cover up the identifying information. That's what those unsightly bits are of paper and uh, cobbled together post-it notes. Um, but here it is. So there's sort of a, it's actually a steel gray sort of frame, metal frame with an off-white mat and a blue secondary mat, second mat. And there's the cross stitch. The Witsy and Booth friends birth announcement. It's a lot of fun stitching it. I actually originally started it for a different nephew, but then this one came along and it suited him better, and a different one that I'd started for someone else suited the original nephew better. So there we have it. It was a quick stitch. I think it's 14 count Ada. It's a large, a large count size. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I really don't like yellow. But if I'm giving it away to someone, it won't be on my wall. I still think it's really cute. So there you go. So I've shown you an old finished object and some Mill Hill bead kits that are finished. Um, they just need the backing on them. And one, two actually, two uh, finally or fully finished objects. And I thought I'd interject here with a little bit of progress on my earth um, birth announcement. This one, um, I just made some progress towards filling in that bottom corner there. Um, I'm, I really want to get it done, but I've been distracted by what I'll be showing you right at the end. Uh, so. That and I really can't afford to frame anything else for a while. I spent over $500 framing what you just saw plus one more. And it's worth it. He does a, an amazing job. But money is a finite resource. So it'll take a while. This time I think I'll try and do the smart thing and save up beforehand before I um, just take everything to the framers. But... It won't, it won't take too long and I'll have that corner filled in and I can do the back stitching and the personalization. Here she is, the whole piece sampler. A word of warning to, to people who get motion sickness really easily, I am just holding this in my hand. So, um, so I'm sorry in advance for the shakiness. Um, I thought I'd film a bit just to show you some of the beading and some of the specialty stitches. I'll start up here. So the center of this motif is filled with a krennic. Um, it's a thicker braid type thing. 
but it wouldn't, I don't know, there were supposed to be beads at the intersections. There we go. It's supposed to be beads at the intersections. But I thought it looked a bit messy, so I left them out. There's just the tiniest bit of shimmer in that braid. I don't know if the camera picks it up. So instead, I put the beads there. That should have been empty stitches. Those are iris colored Mill Hill Petite beads. Should have been empty stitches. And I did the same thing again down here on these flowers. Again, those should have been empty stitches. And then there were some white beads. Um, these ones I did as charted. So the Phoenix has some there. The pattern showed this to be different on either side, not symmetrical, so I made it symmetrical. I don't know if that was on purpose or if that was a mistake. There are also white beads in the crowns, quite a few in there, and then just one in the smaller crowns. Those are as charted. Specialty stitches, uh, there's this rice stitch. It's basically a, a regular cross stitch with one strand but then you cross over each little arm again. So you make your X and then over that arm, over that arm, over that arm, over that arm. And it takes forever, but I ended up liking the way it looked. Um, there are also down here Algerian Islands, fairly straightforward. I like the way the thread kind of pulls the fabric. And these here are called road stitches, kind of in the shape of a heart. Gives a nice bit of texture. And it's really hard to see, but there's something called a four-sided stitch here. It basically looks like three boxes. We'll see if I can get just a bit closer. Ooh, focus is not behaving then. But that was that. I also really enjoyed what I call the bee, bee boxes. Um, basically, it's, it's a negative image of the bees that you saw up there. But that was fun to do. I ended up having to frog one and a half of these um, because I made a mistake right in there. There's three full rows between each bee, and I did two. And then I got to the edge and realized it wasn't lining up. I had to go all the way back and fix it. I think that's, those are the details I had wanted to show you. So I'll leave you with kind of the full image again. Sorry about the shadow. There you go. That's the sampler. So she needs a wash. She needs an iron. She needs a frame. I don't know if I mentioned it. I think I'll make an extra trip up to Winnipeg. Um, I just said, well, I don't live in Winnipeg. I'll make an extra trip um, to get this to the framers as soon as possible. I've got an FFO for you. It's finished, completely finished. Sorry about the shake. I'm holding my phone in my hand, so. Uh, now I understand why people do these things at an angle, because it helps eliminate the glare, even if it does distort a little bit. So I'll back out so you can see the whole thing. I, um, I get my stuff framed at a place called Fleet Galleries. I don't know why it isn't focusing now. I get my stuff framed at a place called Fleet Galleries, and um, it's a fourth or fifth generation framer. And I've had really good results from him before, so I keep using him. Got this piece and two others framed. Cost me about 500 bucks, which is a lot, but I think it's worth it. So as you can see, I've got a double mat. There's this sort of a gray green, and then this cream or taupe, and then a barn board look wooden frame. I had a really hard time picking out mats and frame because although we've got a gray feel in the piece and there's gray in the text here, the fabric has brown in it. 
and that I found that really challenging and so I let the framer pick out the mats and I'm really happy with what he came up with so let's see if it will cooperate with focusing sorry about reflections but there's the whole thing I think you can see it and I guess I should mention this is the piece sampler from a just cross stitch magazine um, I showed some of the details of the beading and the stitching before so I won't go through that again but I like the the double matting lifts the glass up a bit so I don't have to worry about the stitches getting squished I also don't have to worry about the the beads or the specialty stitches like these ones here being squashed either and I did this is the very first piece I've ever signed and I did it very light on purpose and as my initials and the year so I'm really happy with with the result I really like the work he does and I've never been disappointed um, I have things that he framed years ago and it's still in good shape so there we go my first floss tube FFO of course, with as many whips as I have, you'd think I'd be content with that, but no. So, um, I haven't put any of my haul on this video, but one of the things I bought recently was a magazine, and I'll put the details up on the picture. And I saw this, and I thought that would be fun to stitch. I didn't really have a specific person in mind, or but, but I just thought it would be fun to stitch. So I grabbed some black fabric, and you'll see in the next clip uh, some of my thoughts and where that's going. I'm currently working on this, it's called Inspirational Poster. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I started it just because I wanted to, and I happened to have fabric that I thought would work. Um, it's from the World of Cross Stitching magazine. And it's designed by Emma Congdon. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. And I think she's got other designs done in the same style. Um, I'm kind of considering either hanging it up at school, which is where I work, or um, maybe giving it to the place where I go for counseling. Um, I don't know maybe maybe people there would appreciate it I don't know anyways I decided that I would do it on black fabric which I'm really loving I'm loving how for example these teals are popping and those little those little flowers are I haven't done the back stitching yet but and it's stitching up really quickly as you can see I'll swing you back to the original design here as you can see, I'm pretty much, I'm almost done this mile sign, I've done the begins, and I've started work on the cruise ship and on the thousand banner. So that leaves those two bits, the clouds, the airplane, the, the letter A, and the journey of a, uh, plus the backstitching. But there's not a lot of it, it's kind of just where you really need it. Anyways, back to the black fabric. Um, one problem to solve was this with a. So I posted on uh, Cross Stitch and Discuss on Facebook and asked for advice. And there were a lot of ideas and I went with using this teal color, two strands. Just because um, I know there's teal up here, but it starts with the darker, and there's going to be, there's this, it's actually a light blue, even though it looks white. And I thought, I mean, the butterfly flies through the air, so I thought that teal would kind of give an airy feel. I did consider doing it in acrylic, but then I thought, I don't know, it just didn't seem to suit the style of, of the piece. At least, not to my mind. So, um, one issue I've come up against, besides having to replace this, which is black in the original design, 
is these waves here. I didn't even think of it at first, but after I stitched them, sorry about the uh, not super steady hand here. I don't have any kind of tripod. Um, I'm realizing that without the white fabric behind it, this just looks like random swirly designs. So once all the blue is stitched in, I think I'm going to add white stitches and use the back stitching lines as my guide to make it look more like waves. Um, like I said before, I know this looks white, that's the same color there, but it's not. It's actually a light blue and you know what, I wonder if I can grab that for you. My threads are here. There you can see a little more clearly that it's it's not a, looks gray here, but anyways, it's not white. So hopefully I can stitch white um, and cover up some of that black and then it'll look more like waves, like it represents waves. And the other bit, um, you can see the letters beginning to form here. It's going to say thousand. So there's the bottom of the T and the beginning of the H. And there are some shadows in brown, but um, but the letters themselves on the chart are left blank. In other words, the white of the fabric would form the letters negative space. And I think I'm going to stitch those in too. It would be fine to leave them, but I like the the lighter, brighter effect that having them white gives. I just wanted to mention one more thing. I found two spots now where the chart was, I don't know, I thought it was a little inconsistent. So I don't know if you can tell, but those two stitches right above my fingernail are a slightly darker brown. They're the same brown as runs down the side of the letter. But then here on the L in what would be, I guess, the analogous spot, um, they were charted as this medium brown. And I've left it blank because I think I'm going to put that darker brown in so that it's uh, similar in style. And the other spot that I saw that happen was here. This bit of shadowing that's done with that color that looks white but isn't. Let me just zoom in just a little for you. There we go. Somehow when I zoom in, the focus works better. I don't know if it's because it assumes that you're closer up. I don't know. Anyways, that is charted. That little lonely white stitch. This one is not. And it seems to me that they should either both be there or not be there. The other letters doesn't really matter or there isn't a similar situation. So I, I pop that one in. Um, that's all I have to say about this piece right now, inspirational poster. I'm having a ton of fun stitching it. Should be working on, you know, all the other things that I've already started. But it's a nice break. And it's stitching up so quickly that it won't really get in the way of anything else long term. So the last image I'm leaving with you with is my progress on the inspirational poster. I'm actually a little bit further along. I've got the blue behind the cruise ship filled in. Um, you're probably seeing some of that in the clip I just showed you. And the banner, the pink banner that I had just begun here, uh, it's about halfway done, the word thousand. And I started just a little bit on the airplane that pulls the banner and one of the clouds by the cruise ship. Oh, and I've started some of the back stitching on the single ticket. Um, but I thought I'd leave you with that. It's It's been a lot of fun to stitch and smart design because with every word or image or motif, you kind of feel like you've got a mini finish going. So that's fun. Um, yeah, so I'll leave you on that note. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please hit like or subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. I try really hard to answer or reply to all the comments and all your kind words. Um, so thanks for stopping by and see you again soon.